You know, a few months back I did a video in which I mentioned that I had modified one of these butane stoves to be more efficient. And um, I kind of thought maybe I'd show you exactly what I did. But the fact is that you can buy these stoves that are ma already made that way. Um, the older models, they're not. But, the new, but some of the new, newer models are, have this little uh, design feature that I'm going to show you. And I'll leave a link at, below this video to one of those newer model stoves. They're not that, e that expensive. But let me show you what I did to this one. And then we'll see if we can modify this old one over here to do the same thing. Of course, these are designed to run off of butane fuel like this. And this one is a fancy dual fuel one that you can connect a hose to this. The hose comes in the back and you can have a hose come in so it'll run off a one pound propane cylinder, but that totally defeats the purpose of this being just a handy little stove, all, all compact like that. I don't like to have a bottle hanging out the side of it. So I'm going to continue to use this with the propane canisters that it's made to use just because it's so handy. Just to use it like that. The, some of the newer ones have a, a piece of metal that takes the heat from the burner here and, su and supplies it down to this area down here to keep this bottle warm. Because when this bottle gets low and it gets really cold, and <laughs> instead of having a, a nice bright flame to the very end, you get this for the, like the last half an hour of use, you got this little tiny flame over here that's good for nothing but maybe simmering. So what they did on the newer stoves is they installed some metal to transfer some heat down here to keep this bottle warm. And that's what I did on this stove. So you can see that what I did inside here is I just took some aluminum chimney flashing that you can buy at any hardware store and I just made it fit so that it comes from here and comes down and goes under the bottle here. To do that I had to cut a little hole in this partition here. Let me show you on this other stove. Basically, I had to cut this open here to let that piece of metal go through. Like that. I just did that with a Dremel tool with a little cutoff wheel. That was the easiest way and it only took a couple minutes to cut that opening through there. Then I had to just take some uh, tin snips and I had to just cut this piece of metal and curve it so that it ended up here in the flame right here by this burner. And then it came down here and wraps around the bottle. Now, um, this does not make the bottle hot. The temperature down here when you're running the stove, this piece of metal down here gets to be about 90 degrees. And that's, that's about it. It just keeps the bottle warm. Hey, I need to interrupt this video. I went ahead and bought the stove that already has that modification in it. So after you see what I did to these stoves, stay tuned to see if the commercial one does any better. So when you're using the stove, this butane coming out of the can here freezes, just like propane does if you release it fast, it, it tends to make the nozzle cold. Well, that makes it so the fuel is flowing a lot slower and it's just kind of a pain in the butt when this thing gets to be almost empty and this stuff is not cheap and you, you end up throwing the can away because, you, because the flame is just goes down to a very low setting. If you were just to take the bottle out and hold it in your hands for a few minutes and warm it up again and put it back in the stove, it would burn normally again. So all you're doing is using that piece of metal just to move a little heat down to the bottle and keep it warm. And it does work. You can watch this one in action. I want to get the camera too hot here. So you can see that that piece of metal I put in there is just barely in the flame. I'll let it burn for a while. 
And we'll measure it here with this digital thermometer. Right now it's already 134 degrees. Just measure the temperature on the very side of the bottle right there. Right now it's at 73 degrees. Up here at the front, 69 degrees. Well, I went ahead and I put a full bottle in each of these two stoves and they've been going now for 10 minutes and this one is reading 58 degrees and this one's reading 72 degrees. So remember all you need to do is just keep this bottle from freezing and when they when they get low on on uh, fuel then that's where you're going to start to see a freeze. That's where I see it anyways. So this does work. This is the unmodified stove on this side and this is the modified stove and it is keeping the bottle warm or warmer. So in case you wanted to modify your own stove, it's just a matter of bending that metal around and you know getting some aluminum flashing or it could be steel but the aluminum worked fine. And then down here I just had to cut it a little bit so and bend down two little tabs your stove is probably going to be different. And look at the way the um, shuttle works on this. Look, look up, look up here. This is what pushes the bo the bottle over. See that? To make it engage on the left side. But look at this one. The whole rack down here moves. So that means that I can't do the same thing on this stove. I can't have this piece of metal coming through on top of this rack because the whole rack moves. So I'm going to do something different. Well, this is a total experiment and it may turn out to be a total waste of time. <laughs> Remember, these stoves aren't that expensive to begin with, but if you just happen to have one kicking around um, and it happens to have this movable tray on the bottom, well, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to do something with wire. This is number 12 copper wire. And I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is heat it up and anneal it so that I can bend it easier. Then I'm going to wrap it around this burner here and bring it down through here and lay it along the side of the bottle and see if I can transfer enough heat down that way. First things first, got to anneal the wire. Annealing is when you heat up copper or brass really hot and uh, when you do that it makes it soft until you bend it a bunch and it gets hard again. So I'm going to just heat it up on this electric burner on the stove next to me here and uh, go from there. That's going to need to get red hot. Now you don't need to quench it to, to make it anneal. That's a misconception, but I'm going to do it just to cool it off here so I can handle it. Doesn't make any difference if you do or don't. Now the wire will bend really super easy. It's just nice and soft. Okay, what I did is I took the wire and I just wrapped it around that burner and down through the opening down here to where it left this wire exposed down here. And now we'll see how it transfers heat. This, of course, I didn't do this neatly. I just threw that together. I just want to see if this works. So is this working? Well, the temperature of the wire right down there is 120 degrees, 119, 120, 123. Both sides. 120, 123. So that's got to be transferring heat to the bottle. So I'd have to say, yeah, it's it's probably working and the temperature of the bottle here is it's not that warm about 56 58 degrees something like that on this side 62 oh wait warmer over here 70 degrees 72 73 so it is warming it up on that one side it's probably not as efficient as having this um, metal tray that's actually touching the bottle because this wire isn't really touching the bottle back behind it, but it is working.
This is another Gas One. It was $40 delivered through Amazon. This is a 15,000 BTU burner, so it is, uh, it does have twice the BTUs as the other stoves I was showing you. It's got a wind protection on it. This is a windscreen around the outside, which should help. It's got a brass burner. This is brass. And then over here, well, let me get it turned around here. It takes the heat from the bottom of this aluminum part of the burner, which does get hot, and transfers it over into here. Now, the one thing I can tell you that I noticed right off the bat is this is a really thick piece of aluminum. Well, relatively speaking, because it's a lot thicker than what I used. This piece of aluminum is, looks to be a good six sixteenth of an inch thick. So that's going to retain the heat a lot better than what I put on. Well, let's see how it does anyway. Well, we'll measure the temperature down at the bottle and see how it's doing. And to start out, the bottle is 65 degrees. Down here at the end, it's 69 degrees. I'm going to come back in about 10 minutes. It's been about four minutes. Now the bottle is cooling down. You can see it. It's down to 55 degrees now, 60, 58, 60 degrees here. This end over here is about 75, 77. That's actually warmed up a bit down on this end. The aluminum is warming up. About, I'm getting readings up to about 90 degrees down in there. I'm sure that when you're using this, it's a lot better to keep this closed to retain the heat inside. By the way, I'm liking this stove a lot, a lot. That burner is cranking out the heat. 15,000 BTUs, that's pretty nice. The bottle's kind of maintaining 56, 58. I th and the bottle is, this much gas going out is making the bottle chill down a lot. But the bottle is maintaining temperature and I think it's sucking the heat out of that aluminum plate. So this is working. The bottle is maintaining a pretty much a steady temperature here. Right there, 56, 58 is where I've been measuring right there. So that is working. Is it working better than the one I modified? Um, not really, but it is working. You see the one that I did, the, the aluminum is actually up there in the flame. So I was moving quite a bit of heat down here. But yeah, it's working. So let me shut it off real quick and I want to measure the heat of that uh, plate underneath. Ninety-six, ninety-four at the back, ninety-five at the very back in there, and 109 down in here, 109, 108. Yeah, it's working. Well, okay, I'd say that's a pretty nice deal for a new stove, 40 bucks, or modify your old one like I showed you. So is this worth doing? Probably not. It was a lot of fun to play with. Um, the stoves are so reasonable, you can buy them online so cheap, it's not worth doing it yourself. But if, if you're a handy person and you just like messing around with stuff, and you happen to have one of these old stoves, that will, that will make this bottle burn at a higher temperature to the very end than it would if, it, if you just allow the bottle to get cold. It, it's, what annoys me is that last half an hour of fuel that you got left and you're trying to boil water for coffee in, it just won't do it. Well, this will help. Hey, you guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like, share, and subscribe, and see you around.